All right, so we've looked at some basic clip launch properties. Now, if we go down to this area where the launch button was hidden and then later revealed, there's another button over here uh, that is currently hidden. And if we click on this, we're gonna see we now have a box that says envelopes. Now, when we're talking about music, electronic music especially, an envelope refers to something changing over time, a parameter that's being changed over time. Uh, there's a volume envelope where over the period of holding a note, uh, the attack is the volume from when you strike the note to that note going to full volume. If you have something that kind of swells, maybe like a string that gradually uh, gets louder and louder in volume, it would be considered that you have a slow attack. If you're dealing with drums, the kicks, snares, hi-hats, uh, as we saw in the audio clips, uh, as soon as the kick is struck or the snare is struck, it jumps to a high volume very quickly. There's a very quick attack. Uh, that is part of the volume envelope. Uh, there's a lot of other things that can have envelopes, so they can be affected over time. And using the clip envelopes, we're able to automate uh, certain parameters so that they change over time. That's what the clip envelopes are for. So this is our first sort of foray into automating different parameters. Now we haven't added any effects or anything like that, and we're not quite ready to do that just yet. But let's start playing with some clip envelopes here. I have my crazy little rubber chipmunk sound. I'm gonna solo this and we'll play just this clip. That's a really weird sound, right? Now if we look down here, okay, we have this box that says sample and these are the properties for the sample. And there's a little yellow arrow here showing that that's what we're currently looking at in the clip view. We have our envelope and then we have a little arrow there, but this arrow is gray because we're not currently looking at the clip envelope. If I click this arrow here, you might have noticed there's like a little dashed line here that shows up. This is showing us the current status of the parameter that's been selected in the envelopes. And when I'm saying parameter, I just mean a specific thing that can be changed. So if we look in the boxes under the envelopes area, the top chooser box is gonna show us a more broad area where there's certain parameters that can be affected. So in this case, there's the mixer, the mixer is talking about the mixer section of the track. So the volume of the track, the panning of the track, whether the track is muted or not, these are all things that can be automated on the mixer level. So if I select mixer, the box below that is gonna show me the things I just mentioned. Speaker on, that's whether the track is muted or not. Track panning, track volume, the crossfade assigned, we're not using the crossfader right now and then the volume of the A and B returns. And again, we're not using those right now either. So that's what can be automated on the clip envelope if you're dealing with the mixer. We also have the clip. So if we select clip, instead of dealing with uh, the mixer parameters of the track, we'll be dealing with parameters that directly affect this one clip. So let's select clip. And now let's see what options show up in the chooser box below it. We have volume modulation, so we can affect the volume. Transposition modulation, so we can affect the pitch. And these last three are specific to certain warp modes. And before I even go into explaining that, let me just bring up the warp mode selector here. As you can see, we have six different warp modes to choose from. And the beats warp mode is what we're using as our default warp mode. If we go over here, there's grain size modulation and flux modulation. These affect the texture and tones warp modes. Sample offset modulation affects the beats warp mode. And you can do some very interesting things where you're essentially rearranging the order of the audio by using this. We'll get to this a little bit later, but this is a very, very cool technique that only works with the beats warp mode. Right now, again, I wanna keep it kind of simple. So we're gonna focus on volume modulation and transposition modulation. So basically we're able to automate the volume and the pitch of this clip as it plays. I'll select volume modulation. Now, this is saying modulation because if we look at this little line here, this line is at the very top, and this line represents the current volume of the clip. Now, if I look at the volume of the clip, the volume isn't all the way at the top. The volume is at zero dB, which is right in the middle. So if I click on this little line here, I'm gonna hover over it, you see that the clip envelope turns uh, this kind of pinkish red color. And if I click on this line, I can make a dot, a little break point. And once I've done that, it's saying 100%, which means that this line represents 100% of the current volume level of the clip. Okay, so we're all the way at zero dB. 
I'm going to go to the end of this little line and I'm going to put another dot there. By placing those dots at the beginning and the end, that means this clip is going to start at 0 dB and it's going to end at 0 dB. But maybe I want the volume to dip in the middle. I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag this little dot down. And we can see in the middle of the clip, it's going to be 0%. We saw that up there. So the volume will start at the full volume, the full current volume of the clip, 0 dB. Over the course of two bars, the volume is going to fade completely out. And then over the next two bars, the volume is going to fade back in. Let's hear the result of this. Now, if you notice, if you look at the clip volume, you see there's a little orange dot there that's showing us the modulation. It's showing us that the volume is being changed over time. It's starting at 0 dB, it goes down, it goes back up. Now, the reason why this is significant, the idea of modulation is significant, is because if I change the clip volume, this doesn't affect what I've done with this clip envelope. It's gonna start at whatever I set the clip volume at and do the same action. So we're just going from 100% of the current clip volume to 0%. Now, another thing to keep in mind here is that we're dealing with a four bar clip. Let me hit my arrow over here so we're looking at the clip without the envelope. I look at the loop, it starts at bar one, the length is four bars. If I go to my envelope again, my clip envelope, the length of the envelope is the same as the length of my clip. I've got a four bar clip, so my envelope, the automation or the modulation that I've created is gonna last for four bars. Now, I want to clear this envelope. So I'm just going to right click inside of the clip. Remember, right clicking is your best friend, and there's clear envelope. Now that automation is gone, if I play this clip again, there we go. Now, what I'd like to do is do some automation that doesn't have to happen over the course of four bars. In fact, I've got a really cool idea that I think would prove to be very useful for a lot of you out there. I wanna do more of a stutter gate kind of effect, where basically the audio is only gonna play maybe every other 16th note, something like that, to give it some sort of rhythmic uh, volume gating. Now, I don't wanna draw in the volume becoming silent every 16th note over the course of four bars. That's just unnecessary, because if it's something that's gonna happen at a regular interval, maybe I can make the envelope a shorter loop length and I'll have to draw in less automation. So if I don't want my envelope to be the same length as my clip, I need to unlink the envelope. Right here where it says loop, the loop length of the envelope is linked to the loop length of my clip. If I don't want that, I can click on the linked button and now it says unlinked. Now when this happens, you're not gonna see the audio from the clip anymore, all right? Because your envelope is now essentially separate from the length of the clip. If you wanna see the clip again, hit this arrow where it says sample, and then you can see the clip. If you wanna see the envelope, hit the arrow here, and now we can see the envelope. So if I want the audio to drop out every other 16th note, this doesn't need to be a four bar loop. In fact, it doesn't even really need to be a one bar loop. I can make this a very short loop, and let's just make this loop every beat. So my loop is now one beat long. As I zoom in, I'm looking at the grid resolution down here in the corner and it says each line represents a 64th note. Well, that's a bit too much. I don't really need to see that many lines. I wanna drop the audio out every other 16th note. So I can actually change the grid resolution so that it doesn't adjust as I'm zooming in further. You see, as I zoom in further, it changes. I basically want my envelope to take up the whole clip view, but I want the grid resolution to be 16th notes. If I right click here, I have an option to change the grid resolution to a fixed grid. So then instead of changing as I zoom in or out, it's always gonna be the same. So let me change this to 16th notes. And now I have four lines inside of my one beat loop. We can break one beat down into four 16th notes. So here we go. Now the main challenge is that I wanna be able to make it so that every 16th note, the volume drops out right on the 16th note and comes back in right on the next 16th note. Now using the method that I used before, if I put a dot, let's say here on the second beat, 
and then a dot here on the third beat, and then another dot before this one, and I bring this down. Oops, there we go. And then I bring that down, and then maybe another dot here, and then I'll try to bring this down. This isn't quite exact, okay? And that process of creating four different breakpoints to drop the volume here is really, it's more work than is necessary. So instead of doing that, let me go ahead and just undo all of that work. Command Z, there we go. Instead of doing that, we can use something uh, that's called the draw tool. There's a pencil icon up here next to our little MIDI computer keyboard. And if I click on this, I can use a pencil tool to basically draw in automation that will snap to the lines in my grid. So that same action where I had to create four breakpoints in order to make this snap to the second 16th note, I can simply just click and hold and just do like that. So now when I get to the second 16th note, the audio will be silent. The third 16th note, it'll come back on. And then this last one, we'll just do like that. Another way you can get to the draw mode is by simply pressing B. And B will toggle that on or off. You don't need a modifier, just press B and you can go back and forth between enabling the draw mode. So now with this done, let me play this again and let's hear what we did. All right, very cool. So now I got more of a stutter thing going on here. So I'll take this one step further. I'm gonna right click and change my grid setting to 30 second notes. And instead of doing this every other 16th note, let's do it. No, oh, this is every other 16th note. What I just did was making the volume mute every other eighth note. Now we're gonna make it so that it comes on and off every other 16th note. So you can do some really interesting stuff here. And again, the idea of taking these clips and duplicating them means that not only can you change basic properties, but you could also change aspects of the clip envelope. So let's make it so that the second clip will have a different rhythm from the first one, something like that. So clip envelopes are extremely powerful and we're only manipulating the aspects of the clip right now. Just imagine we start throwing some effects on there. We can really have some fun.